Greetings, YouTube. The first anti-science bill has been put forth in Mississippi by State Representative Gary Chisholm. Um, Mr. Chisholm is putting forth a bill uh, known as House Bill 586, uh, which is going to try to require equal footing in the science class for evolutionary theory and creationism. Interestingly enough, the bill has the following paragraph. The lesson provided to students shall not evidence bias through selective instructions on the theory of evolution, but rather shall have proportionately equal instructions from educational materials that present scientifically sound arguments by protagonists and antagonists of the theory of evolution. There's one problem with this, at least as far as he's probably going to be concerned. There is no scientifically sound argument by antagonists to evolution none whatsoever. Evolution is science. At least Mr. Chisholm has that correct. Creationism, however, is faith. It's not necessarily bad that it's faith. I support people's right to believe it. I defend their right to believe it. I have no problem if they believe it. It isn't, however, science. And so it cannot be balanced against a scientific theory in any way, shape, or form. So even if this bill were to pass, it would defeat itself, which is a certain level of sweet irony, if you ask me. But it's just another shot at the anti-science crowd attempting to dilute our children's education with pointless and needless intrusions of religion in school. Now as I've said before, there is no stopping children from praying in school. There are no rules against praying in school. You cannot enforce such a rule. It has never been written. The rules have been written so that the schools cannot lead children in prayer. For some reason, that little detail always seems to escape people's notice. So it's not that the schools are against religion. It's the schools are against leading students in religious services. Students themselves are free to believe as they choose. They aren't, however, allowed to pray out loud, nor prolistize to their classmates. They, again, they aren't allowed to stand up and sing in class either. That's considered disruptive. And if you're trying to bring your faith into a science class, that is also disruptive. It runs rather counter to the whole concept of a science education. If you're going to have a science course, you need to teach science, not faith. Now, if you're going to have a comparative religion course, creationism would fit right in. Though I'm probably thinking that wouldn't be allowed until like junior or senior year. That is a kind of an advanced topic to, for most students to tackle. I know many adults that would have a difficult time with that. Uh, in fact, I know most adults would have a hard time with that particular um, subject. But it just saddens me that every year, year after year, some politician somewhere is going to use this quote-unquote wedge issue to get himself some notice, or herself. It isn't always men. They don't really care about the issue, of course. They just want to get themselves noticed. It's like any other hot-button social issue. Getting the social issue changed or modified in an effective manner isn't the real mission. It's just to use that hot social issue to get themselves publicity, to get themselves onto the political radar, if you will. If they actually solved the problem and made it go away, they couldn't use that issue anymore, now could they? So actually solving the problem as they perceive it isn't their goal. Their goal is to use the situation to their own benefit. And unfortunately, in this case, benefiting a politician harms our children's education. American students have an abysmal understanding of science. I have talked to many students in the past couple of decades who have just graduated from high school. Pardon me, itch. And they have a woefully poor understanding of even the most basic concepts of how the world around them works. And this from a guy who's a hardline theist. I'm just not close-minded. 
Of course, they also have a woeful understanding of the English language, social structures, math, you name it. I had a coworker of mine, an adult, married, got a kid who's I think 14, stunned that I know how to take a number and another number and create a percentage. You know, you take the small number, divide it by the big number, multiply it by 100. In this case, it was because it was one reject out of a certain number. You're, you can't really have more rejects than you have parts. So there's never going to be a situation where the small where the one number is going to be smaller than the other, like that. So it's always small number divided by a big number. And this just amazed the man. It was like I was magic. I'm not magic, and I'm really bad at math. But even I can pull that one off. But I do wish that politicians would stop trying to harm students in an effort to get themselves elected or re-elected or just onto the political uh, bulletin boards to give talking points to the neocon community. It'd be nice if they could find a way of making themselves known without hurting kids, without damaging their education. I would really like to see politicians actually care about the children and not just use that as an empty phrase.